Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile, joined again by Cody Joe from Iridescent Exotics, and we're in their wonderful home doing a reptile room tour on the 13th day of Jam Pack July. Let's get started. So, Cody, just giving a general overview of what's going on right here, what what do we have? This is your this living room? <laughs> yeah, we kind of call this like our little showroom. Okay. Um, it's mainly monitors in this room, yeah. uh, with the exception of a group of vine snakes. Perfect, which we'll see. So in this tank here, actually, throwback to the OG viewers of my videos, this tank here used to be uh, Bane, or not Bane, uh, Bowser and Stella's tank, and <laughs> Cody's done a lot of work with it, and it is looking killer. Uh, in here, we have a pair of Simulus, Fryna Simulus. Yeah, yeah. They're in that cork yeah. tube back there. Basically like a, a black and white version of a Timur monitor. Yeah, I'll throw up a picture on screen because these guys are basically pet cork tubes, so looks incredible in there. And that's, what, it's something weird. It's like three foot by four foot by like 18 or whatever. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's like 30, 38 by yeah. 46 or something. And in here we have some of the monitors. Well, actually I'm jealous of all of Cody's monitors, but... These are definitely some of them. These are a trio of Pilbara Rock Monitor. Varanus Pilbarensis. Yeah. You can just see, that's a male and a female? Yeah, so that's a pair there, and then there's another female hiding up uh, at the very top. Is the male the one with the skinnier head or the thicker head? Thicker head, so mm -hmm. he would be on the bottom. Okay. Yeah, the, the females both have a lot more pattern on the sides of their face. Okay. Uh, and then I noticed their tail's a lot shorter as well as the, the typical taper. Here you guys go. Beautiful, beautiful. And then the other females are way up at the top, which you guys will not be able to see. But you can see the tank that they're in. Really, really cooking hot basking spot. Another basking spot up there, UVB. What's your favorite monitor that you own? <laughs> uh, I'd have to say out of any of them, it would probably have to be the Torch monitor. Uh, just beyond the fact that it's super cool. Uh, she's probably the tamest out of all of them. Okay. Yeah, you guys will see the Torch monitor right now. This is the Torch monitor's tank. Uh, Varanus... Obor. Obor, yeah. 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 Um, so this is an Indonesian species. You can see her back there. Look at that. So she doesn't come all the way out. You will be able to tell that, or she's pretty much all black with like a red face, hence the torch monitor, right? Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful monitor. I can definitely... I think this is my favorite of yours. Uh, the green tree is probably a close second, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one's actually getting pretty tame, too. Yeah. A lot tamer than the blue tree. So the last tank in the, I guess, showroom is vine snakes. For those of you that don't know. So out here, there's typically three, three, three subspecies that uh, you'll see available. Uh, there's the two and Asuda, which is these guys, which typically have, I recognize them by, they have kind of a longer um, and kind of a turned up snout. Whereas the Prasina don't seem to have that little turn turn up at the end. Uh, and then there's the, the two of McTerrazans, uh, and their face is a little bit less alien-like, if that makes sense. Uh, and they typically eat more fish. Whereas these guys eat more lizards. Although one of these recently has been uh, picking off guppies out of the pond. Oh yeah. Going in and out of focus, but you guys can tell. These guys are really cool. They're really not all that common, uh, especially in Canada. Super cool species. And how long have you guys had these guys for? Uh, the big female in there. Uh, maybe around a year. Okay. Uh, and then these other two actually I had available at the show. I was going to bring them to the next show, but they've just been doing so good in here that I'll probably just keep the three together. 
really cool. So that kind of does it for the for the showroom slash living room. <laughs> now we can go check out the family room, which you guys can just see. I mean, who would watch TV up there when you got these two guys right next to it? So in here is one of my favorite monitors that Cody has. This is a green tree monitor. Varanus Priscinus? Yeah. She just got finished with a mouse a little while ago, so. Soaking up those rays. Beautiful. She's grown a lot since you got her. Yeah, finally starting to get that size. Yeah. Like to pair it up soon. Absolutely. And then moving on to the other side, we got a beautiful emerald. She's got a good amount of blue, eh? Or is that just iridescent? Uh, yeah, she's pretty iridescent, that one. And especially in the darker spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like right up there and over there, you can see a lot of blue tin. Yeah. I She actually had a ceramic heat emitter above there. Uh, I accidentally broke it the other day, though, so there's an incandescent bulb. And that usually makes them pretty iridescent, too, so... Nice. We've covered everything upstairs. Now it's time to go into the real reptile room. So this is Cody's reptile room. And this is not even all of it. She's not always out all the time. This is a Kimberly Rock monitor. And... Australian species, dwarf, stays... Mm, likely won't get much bigger than she is, right? Uh, yeah, they're at about two feet. Yeah. The guy who I got this one from has a big male. It's about two and a half. Okay. Uh, puts this male active to shame. <sighs> so that's beautiful. Hopefully she's out or he is out when we uh, come back around, but... These are some of the white lip pythons. Uh, these are southern or black white lip pythons. You can tell they got a bit of an attitude. Um, <laughs> all three of these ones... I'm to strike the glass. I uh, kind of lacked on my humidifier this weekend and all three of these kind of had a little bit of a rough shed so they're going through that right now. But see him up here, this is a, a young gold or northern white lip. Uh, basically the main difference is just the uh, the body has more red and yellow to it, brown. And then in here, this is just a uh, the smaller male mac maclot python. Kind of dark in there, but come on, figure life out. There you go. This stack is is. Just all python breeders. Uh, that's a breeder male down there. These three are all females. Uh, these are my main producing females. This is a newer female I've been adding into the mix. Uh, this year she kind of went the full length and then right towards the end reabsorbed. So next year hopefully we'll we'll get that figured out. Good. And just so people get a gauge, how big is that snake? Like, how long is that? Uh, these girls are around eight, nine feet. There you go. Probably over eight feet now. These cages are five foot by two and a half foot. Um, and you can see they're pretty big in there. Yeah. Wicked, and then we got some um, breeder some boas. boas. This year. This is kind of cool. This snake was in his upper 20s when I bought him about 12 years ago. Uh, you can see he's got one small eye and one big eye. So this is supposed to be... Uh, this is supposed to be the first breeder olive python in Canada. Uh, and then pretty well all the other olives would have come from this original pair. Um, if you look, he's getting pretty old. 
he's blind now, so when I feed him, basically, he just opens <laughs> his mouth and swings the first foot or two of his body, and whatever he connects with, that's that's what he's taking. Good, yeah. Right on. So, he's an old boy. And so you said he was 22 when you got him, and how long have you had him for? Uh, well, he was upper 20s, I think, or, or upper we, we figured it around 26 or 28 when I, oh, uh, right. when I got him, and that, that was 12 years ago. So, wow. Yeah, he's much older than me. This is a pair of black-headed pythons, uh, this is the mess and tongue boat. See this here? That wasn't there when we even started filming. <laughs> Just for the record, you guys. This is a, a normal yeah. female. And then I've got in here on a breeder loan from a buddy of mine, Dustin Noble from Sinful Serpents, uh, a male 100% head albino. So with that, we're just gonna make some, some possible head albino babies, and then we're gonna hold back all the females so that we can breed them back to uh, the 100% head albino male. Okay. Who is hiding? He's just a little guy compared to her. Beautiful. This is one of my dream snakes, is the black-headed python. Incredible. Notice how he's sanitizing between every snake, you guys. It's important to keep at least some mode of uh, cleanliness between snakes, just so you're not transmitting anything. Yeah, you don't want... If one snake's got something, you don't want to spread it through everything. So this here... Um, both these two are Poplin pythons. They're a very unique species. They are so gnarly. It's a large fork tongue and the funky head there. This species will actually, uh, they change color. Uh, they're a lot stronger than most other species. And they do a lot of weird stuff too, like they'll bluff at you. Um, they'll do a full open mouth strike and not really, they'll connect with more of a headbutt, they won't connect with the teeth. Oh, crazy. Uh, Another, a bigger one in there. She's in shadow in the hide. <clears throat> Bug her. Um, down below there, I'll show you a different Timor Python, but sure. that's a smaller male Timor Python. Mm -hmm. And here I'll give you guys just a quick peek at him. This is a, an exanthic black-headed python. Oh yeah. So, to my knowledge, visuals, there should only be two that I know of in Canada. Um, and this is one of them? Yep. A uh, friend, Steve, from Got Reptiles there, has a female. And then this is a co-project um, between us, this male. So hopefully we can produce some. But yeah, we've been raising him up from a hatchling. And so the exantic takes away most of the yellows and reds? Yeah, it basically yeah. just makes it like a black and white photograph. Yeah. Cleans it up really nice. And then when you bring that into the, the hypo, which we've also got animals carrying that gene, uh, the people are making really high white animals. That would be nuts. Beautiful. That's a treat that you guys don't get to see in many places. And here, I have to take a second, because this is actually Cody. Uh, I've had... I guess technically they're co-owned, but they're pretty much his at this point. <laughs> uh, this is a yellow Aki, and he's got a trio of them. This is Jughead. He is an absolute monster. Pretty chill. Uh, this actually used to be one of my good buddy Grant's. And you can just tell, he is a beast. <laughs> Absolutely huge. He even puts Bowser to shame. Bowser's not actually that big, but he is a big boy. Uh, and then down there, you guys already saw the Kimberly. Just took off under there. Yeah. But that's what we got at the beginning. <laughs> now. Um, down here, let's rip through this round. This guy. Excuse the lack of a water dish, I just moved him down here. Uh, 
This is a male Borneo short-tailed python. The female I still have upstairs. They're somewhat new. Uh, the female's putting on weight. She was pretty skinny when I got her. So. Okay. Uh, Down here. So these are more uh, more white pythons. These are golden, right? No, actually, this is uh, another pair of blacks. Oh, really? Um, we'll see. I prefer not to hook them or use gloves. They just do better that way. Let's see if we can get some of the little bit of their iridescence in here. Yeah, these LEDs aren't very good in here, but um, you can see. Yeah, you can super, see. Super cool snake. Absolutely. This guy's kind of unique out of the, out of all five of them actually, this one's really silver. This particular pair, um, another friend of mine kind of had to downsize so he sent them over here. So with, with these guys we're going to see if we need some babies and then uh, make some more captive bread. Uh, so this is another Timor python. This is a Leopython timorensis. This is a male that I'd hopefully like to try next season because I've got a 13-year-old uh, a captive bred female uh, and that's, you can kind of see her curled up down there. And there's really not very many in Canada for sure. You said like nine or ten total? Yeah, Which, maybe something like that. It yeah. Basically, that you know of. <laughs> it took me 12 years um, to build this group of five. And that's all actually happened within the last couple of years, yeah. so, um, oddly enough. Yeah, they're super cool. Very similar to a reticulated python. Almost like they remind me of a, a mix between a Boland's python and a reticulated python. Up here, there's another Poplin python. There, I have a, a male olive python out of the UK, so he's unrelated to the, the Canadian stock, which would be nice. There's another Timor python here. She's up on this ledge. <laughs> One thing about these cages is they like to sit up there or crap underneath the thing. Oh, yeah. And these are, are these vision? These are vision cages, yeah, yeah old school. Yeah. Uh, this here, another pop one python, yeah. I've got the two larger ones and then the two smaller ones. And then, yeah, more dark, but uh, another big Timor python. Hiding out in the back under there is a, uh, a really large mathlot python. Nice. And this is a rack room where I keep some babies. If you look down in there, Scum. that's the other Aki. What's up, girl? Yeah, she got separated from the group because the other one was nipping at her, so we'll have to add more substrate to this, and then she's going to live in here. Mm hmm And she is still being bred to the male. Yeah, she's actually, it's hard to tell the way she's sitting, but she's, well, you've seen her earlier, yeah. super tight and plump right yeah. now, so. We'll see. Here's some of the babies that I've got right now. Um, basically, the boas have taken, some of them have taken two meals, most of them have taken one. With most of my babies, once they've taken four meals back to back, if they skip a meal, then they start from scratch, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so once they've taken four meals back to back, then they're available. This boa litter was a little bit of a downer. Um, the old cal albino gene is kind of, Sometimes we'll throw animals that have these weird pop eyes that eventually, after a couple of weeks, the guy comes out and, and heals over and the snake has one eye or, hmm. or not. So I wound up with a few of those. Any of the albino stuff, a few of them wound up with that. So I'm going to have like some one eye snow boas and albinos and stuff. But otherwise, the good albinos and anathristics, um, normals, all possible, het for snow, they'll be available. And then I've also got these albino, or sorry. Olive pythons. I wish they were albino olive pythons. That'd be nice. Uh, but yeah, we'll take a look. I got some. So on this one, oddly enough, I don't really like when it happens this way, but this eye I thought was going to be bad, and then the eye completely healed and works now. Whereas the other eye, it's probably going to heal over, and it'll wind mm -hmm. up having just one eye. So it'll be just a pet. You can see it's a little bit dirty here, but yeah. But I mean, just for the record, you guys like. Just a pet is just a pet, but it's still gonna eat. It'll still live a long, happy life. Like there's a lot worse can happen to a snake, and it'll live a long time than missing one eye. Yeah, I've got that really old olive python, yeah. and and he's blind nowadays. And trust me, he is just <laughs> fine. Yeah. He's, 
So wow. those of you that are concerned, it's some genetic... Normal Colombian boa. <laughs> Very clean. Yeah, really neat looking. One. Yeah. I like the face pattern. On this Absolutely. One. So they're cool. They've been taking meals decent. Um, for the first ones, anyways, first and seconds. So this is a nice little albino, possible het for anathristic. Beauty. Look at the orange on the tail, like the saddles. Yeah, these, uh, this particular group of boas produces some really nice coral albinos. And this one will be available too, uh, once it has a few more meals. And so you do most of your stuff through Facebook and then at shows as well? Yeah, yeah, you can get up on Facebook. Yeah. Um, the Red Deer Reptile Expo is coming up soon. We'll have the stuff there as well. Yeah. Uh, we normally do Red Deer, Calgary Expos, sometimes Edmonton. So for those of you that are in Canada, because shipping these across to the States is a nightmare, but for those of you that are in Canada and are looking for olives and these boas that you guys are seeing, uh, that's where you can go is any of those shows or hit Cody up on Facebook and uh, they can ship through Reptile Express, so. Yeah, exactly. Within Canada, we, yeah. we've got no issues shipping anything. Yeah. Uh, this here, this is an anathristic. Oh, it's an anathristic. Yeah, you can see the tail. Oh, it's yeah. the easiest, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so basically, same as with the... It seems to be anathristic in boas and exanthic in, in pythons, is what I've found. So that exanthic black-headed python is the exact same thing as this uh, anathristic boa. Yeah. Basically, it just pulls out all the browns and reds, makes it look like a, uh, a black and white photograph. Beautiful. The uh, the olive python babies always have a lot of spunk. That one's got a little bit, uh, a little baby fuzzy in with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this one's a little bit upset right now. Spunk, yeah. <laughs> um, no issue. Now these guys haven't even had their first meal yet. They just hatched. So we're we've now been offering them their first meals. All of pythons are awesome. Uh, once you get them feeding, they don't stop. <laughs> They don't seem to have bad sheds usually. They're pretty foolproof. They, you know, they're, they're a nice sized snake too, which is cool. Yeah. If you're looking for a larger snake, then these guys will get. They got a good size, don't they? Ten fish feet ish. Yeah, like twelve foot for a huge one. Yeah. Um, but usually, yeah, between anywhere from eight to eleven feet is pretty, pretty typical. Yeah. Uh, always active too. Anytime I come downstairs, there's usually all of pythons moving around. And a lot softer than a lot of other species. Now I haven't sexed any of these. Basically, I just I've got pairs that are spoken for for people. So whatever four are left, whatever the sex ratios are, that's kind of what I'm left with. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really too concerned about sexing them until they're eating. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather just kind of leave it be. Just mitigate the stress as much as you can. Yeah, and then they're all. All the baby olives are, you know, they all pretty well look the exact same as each other. Yeah. Super, super cool snakes. Absolutely. This is a little grow up female northern emerald tree boa. <laughs> she was captive bred by Darren Hamill. Beauty. Here, this is uh, insane. <laughs> yeah, this is a holdback baby Amazon tree boa that I produced. Wee! So almost completely patternless. It's got uh, some little black specks here and there, but Amazon's changed a ton. Mm -hmm. The thing with this one is when it was born, it almost had some faint patterns. And then the older it's gotten, the, the it? yeah, it's lost okay. it all and it's got more orange. So, and the the tongue on this one's actually it's hard to see, but the tongue's mainly orange too, which is really really strange for an Amazon. You guys can tell that most. I mean, you just saw it strike there, but most of these arboreal snakes are not the way a lot of people make them out to be. Um, certainly, some of them can be, but you're seeing right now that they're. If you're talking, waving your hand around, yeah. they're going to be biting yeah. you, yeah. Yeah. 
Pretty yeah, nice. otherwise not too bad. Nice. I'm kind of bugging this one, like I'm kind of poking it in there. <laughs> Awesome. And so if you guys are waiting to see some of the arboreal stuff, that will be in another video. Uh, I actually have work here pretty soon, so we won't get to it today, but I'll be back here in hopefully about a week, and we'll film the arboreal room, but I'll make sure to give you guys a teaser with uh, just a little shot of the entryway before we leave. So this is just another black hitter python. Um, again, this is another project. This is my male, and then we clone a uh, a female that's just the same as him. So they're 100% het for hypo, 66% possible het albino. So the game plan with this project would be my buddy Tim from New World Reptiles has the female at his place, and we're gonna breed her to that 100% het albino male, and prove whether she's het albino or not and then take her to this male, and then we'll get the hypos and then see if, if he's had albino. So with the three genes eventually down the line, if we get lucky, hopefully that could lead to like the moon glow version of a, of a black hair python. Yeah. Um, that's just a ball python of a buddy. <laughs> uh, not really <laughs> a ball python guy. Um, this is another just another Timor python that I'm growing up. This is a, a hatchling female. She's about a year and a half old now. Uh, so these are all sunbeam snakes in here. So with the sunbeams, a lot of people have issues with them. I've kept them all sorts of ways. Um, I've found at the end of the day for me, what works best is basically just layered paper. Um, I keep it damp but not wet mm -hmm. and I keep it clean and then yep. they seem to do really well for me that way as you can see that's a newer one so they usually come in a little bit dimpled and newer I mean I've had that animal for probably six months at least yeah six months like in in this mm -hmm. room here but this is a little female I've been growing up and if you guys are interested in seeing a video with some of these snakes outside. I mean, you can see some of the iridescence right now, but with the UV light from outside, whew, the light up. Oh, musk on me. <laughs> oh, no. For anybody, sunbeam <laughs> snakes have the worst smelling musk in the yeah, world. They're pretty bad. You'll smell like Dio for the next week. Yeah. Um, the other one, I've got my other male is, is more of a brown base. He's awesome. Uh, he's getting some serious size too. He's a very aggressive feeder, this guy. He'll come flying out. But you can see he's less black. He's more of a, a brown base. Yeah, absolutely. And when these things come in, they come in really rough shape, covered in blisters, um, all sorts of parasites. So they take a bit of work to get cleaned up. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you can tell there's not a mark on that snake. <laughs> no, yeah, he yeah. looks good now. Uh, when he first came in, just covered in white blisters. Yeah. So they, they make a full turnaround. Absolutely. But yeah, the game plan would be to breed them, obviously make, make some captive bread. Mm-hmm. These are Sabu pythons. They're like a, almost like a mini, um, a mini olive python. This is pretty well full grown here. A very smooth snake, a really high scale count. Um, these guys come from the island of Sabu or Sawu. Uh, the Sabus, I haven't noticed them really coming in. You don't see them around much anymore. I got these guys, a buddy of mine was bringing in a bunch of Indo stuff and these ones came in in 2012, 2013, 2012 or 2013 mm -hmm. and since then every year they would send Maclot pythons in replacement of the, the, the Sabus, yeah. So I'm not sure what's up with that but I've been kind of, I've got a group of six here, three pairs and oddly enough one pair is super black, one pair is super orange still as adults 
and then the other one, the female's really silver and the male is actual a genetic mutation called a silver. Uh, they hatch out silver, whereas normal Savu pythons actually hatch out bright orange and then they fade out to dark. So this is uh, a female that I'm gonna use to make the more black animals. It'll be a fun project. So mm -hmm. they're a great python. Uh, if you're looking for something different, that's not a ball python, you know? <laughs> uh, this is the, uh, the genetic silver male. It's hard to tell once they're larger. As babies, obviously, this whole thing is gonna be silver. And then they get more black with age, so it kind of looks a little bit more like a normal. But keep this color in your head right now because we're gonna pull out one of the orange ones and you guys will see just how different they look. So this here is a female who, and as babies, remember the whole snake comes out orange and the head is kind of like a grayish orange. But this snake as an adult um, is still holding a ton of orange towards the back end. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try and do a bit of selective breeding and, and produce high orange adults would be the game plan. Nice. And you see they're super calm. Mm -hmm. uh, the cool thing is they get those white eyes too. Focus for a second. <laughs> and really hardy snakes, they're... Good eaters and whatnot? Oh yeah, yeah, they're kind of like an olive python. I've got a couple of these animals that they're actually not that aggressive, like I'll just leave it in. But otherwise, yeah, no problem. Nice. And so that's a beginner snake that you'd think would be... Yeah, I would say... Obviously not as common as a ball python. You're gonna run into more issues with a ball python, I would say, in terms of bad, sh bad sheds, feeding, all of that. Um, these guys are pretty solid, whereas the ball pythons, you know, even down here where I have white the pythons, Emerald Trebo is all of that. Oh, the ball pythons, when I had ball pythons, you'd still get ball pythons that would have bad sheds. So the Savu's not an issue for me anyways. I've never had a bad shed, so mm -hmm. they're good for that. So Cody, I want to thank you uh, for having me out. Yeah. This has been a lot of fun and um, hopefully you guys have learned some stuff. If you want to see more of Cody, then you're going to have to pester him because it took me like <laughs> a year and a half to get here. Uh, so. Uh, he does have Facebook, you yeah. do have Instagram, and uh, if they're looking for some more shots of your stuff, then uh, I'll leave links in the description, but it's Iridescent Exotics, and uh, if you guys like the video, make sure you like it, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, leave it in the comment section down below. If you want to follow me on my endeavors on Instagram, Facebook, obviously here on YouTube, uh, all the links and stuff will be in the description as well as if you've seen this shirt, this, uh, this, uh, this here shirt with the leaf tail on it, that's actually my shirt. Uh, there is a link in the description. You guys can go check it out. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you click that subscribe button and, uh, click the post notification bell as well. And Cody, thanks for coming out, man. Or yeah, I guess thanks yeah. for having me out. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for having me on the channel here. Yeah. So if you guys hopefully, Cody will have his uh, YouTube up and this will push him over that yeah. YouTube edge <laughs> for him to start his channel. Uh, we'll get that started for him and hopefully you guys will go click subscribe. So thanks for watching guys. Have a good one. We'll catch you tomorrow. Later.